Hi, Remington from Southern Shoddy 3D, and we here at MoGraph Mentor are very grateful this year for all of our students. And as a way of saying thank you, we would like to provide this free texture pack. It has about 30 materials in it and a couple patterns so that you can kind of mix and match and create even more variations from that. They're PBR materials, which means they're compatible with most render engines. And we're going to walk you through how to set up your material in this video. This lesson's actually listed from our texturing course, and all of our courses are 40% off right now. If you'd like to go check that out, look at the link in the description below. For now, let's get started and learn how to set up these PBR materials. So next we're gonna be diving into how to import our textures here into Octane for Cinema 4D. So we'll be looking at how to do this little kettle right here with the texture maps we've created. Now I will be dragging in these maps from off screen. So just the kettle maps that we've created. So nothing there if that's all you see me dragging in. So let's go ahead and first let's come up here to Octane Materials. We'll create a new material. We're going to do Octane Universal Material. I will call this kettle. And I'm going to drag that kettle onto our kettle material there. And we can see that that's updated. So I'm going to go ahead here. And I want to use the node editor because I believe it's a bit easier and quicker to use. And we're going to grab our node there. Now I'm just going to select my maps here. And the nice thing is that we can go ahead and just drag all these in at once. Now we're going to be using the OpenGL normal map. So I'm going to unclick normal there and drag those in. And we should see that populate the list there with all of them. Now I'm just gonna organize these a bit in order. It doesn't matter what order you do these in, but just based on the order that I'm gonna be doing. So I'm gonna put my ambient inclusion and my base color up there. I'm gonna put my roughness map under there. I'm going to put my metallic map there normal map and height map. And with that, we are ready to go. So what we can do here is we can mix our ambient inclusion and base color. Now, I never use ambient inclusion and base color because I just feel like the render engine ambient inclusion is usually just easier and better to do. So if you wanted to skip ambient inclusion, you would just go ahead and drag that base color into the albedo there. But we can also add a multiply node. So just grab that multiply out there. And you could use a different blending type if you wanted. I usually use multiply though, and just drag our mixed AO there into the bottom slot and our texture into the top slot. And we should see that it kind of updates there. And then you can go ahead and drag that into your color as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that node. And I wanna take note of kind of the shader tab here that on both the mixed AO and the base color, because these are color information maps, we're going to want to make sure that our gamma is set to 2.2 and that our type here is set to normal. Let's go ahead here. We'll grab that into our albedo there. Now let's come down to these maps. Now the normal map we can leave on normal and the gamma shouldn't matter, but with the height map, we're gonna change that to one. We're gonna change our type to float. Metallic map, we're gonna change that to one and change our type to float. And basically think about this, that you're doing this for anything that's not like color information feeding in. So we'll go ahead, change this to float, change that to one and we can begin dragging these over. So let's go ahead, grab the roughness. We can drag the roughness into the roughness there. Let's grab the metallic. We can take the metallic and put that into the metallic there as well. And then it's just as simple as taking our normal map and dragging that into the normal slot there. Now the displacement texture has one extra little setting there. So I'm gonna grab a displacement node over here, drag this texture into the texture here. Then we can grab this and put this into the displacement. And the reason we have this node here is because it requires a few extra settings. So let's go ahead and grab that. And we can see over here that we have extra settings there. A level of detail here by default is gonna be set to the lowest, but we're gonna wanna set this to whatever resolution our map is, which in this case is a 2K texture. And then you have a few options here that you can play with. This is where you're gonna play with your height. Now the default height is usually way too high. You're gonna to wanna to set that to something really tiny. Like I usually do even just 0 0.0 increments. And then up here we have the type of displacement. So we have texture and vertex displacement. So texture displacement is going to try and use the texture to create additional like subdivision data and kind of like adapt your model to fit the texture. 
And vertex displacement will be that if you already have a really heavy model with a lot of topology, it can actually just use the actual vertices to displace. There's no one way that's necessarily better than the other. It's going to be a per object basis. I've heard that if you have objects with a lot of sharp corners and things, you're going to want to kind of do add additional geometry manually and use vertex displacement. But again, you can try it per object and decide for yourself there which one works better for you. Now I'm going to leave displacement unplugged. I don't have it plugged into any of the project files because displacement will drastically increase your render times and displacement is something you really want to save for kind of like drastic changes in geometry. An example would be that you have a plane and you're applying like a brick shader, for example. With that, you should be all set up and good to go to render your octane material.